Should it cut a bit here and there and hope that listeners and viewers don't notice, or do something big and close an entire existing service? Last week, the BBC Director General, Lord Hall, said further cuts across the corporation would put quality in danger. He said he was ready to make hard decisions. There's been no shortage of current and former BBC people saying that the TV channels, BBC Three or BBC Four, could be abolished. That's led to a campaign online to save BBC Three. And although the BBC told PM this afternoon that no decisions had been made, it's pretty clear something's afoot. BBC Three, we're told, is to be dropped from TV schedules and will move online with an announcement coming tomorrow. Sir Christopher Bland chaired the BBC Board of Governors, the predecessors of the uh, Trust, from 1996 until 2001. It does look as though an entire BBC television channel will close down and move online. What do you think? Well, no one should take pleasure at the closing down of a channel because BBC Three has done a good job, reached a younger audience and has produced some decent programmes. But what it is, is a sign of a new realism at the BBC and a determination to live within its means. And to that extent, I think it's a tough, but probably a necessary decision. Why historically has the BBC found it difficult to just shut something down, particularly since it gets into all sorts of new areas all the time? Well, the BBC has always been historically, and this was true when I was its chairman, like a, a shark that has to swim continuously through the water because it thinks that if it stops, it will die. It's true of the shark. It's not, of course, true of the BBC. And the BBC has rarely given up any service. It's always been expansionist. And I think now the truth is it can no longer afford. It could in the past. It could afford to do that. And some of its expansion was both desirable and a great accretion to public service broadcasting, in particular the BBC online service. But today is different, and the outlook for the BBC's funding is tough, and I think it has to do more than simply top slice across every single radio and television and online programme. It has to do something like close BBC Three. Strategically, isn't the potential problem with this decision that uh, for those critics who, who want the BBC to get out of all sorts of areas, they can now say, well, look, you have closed a service. Now, what about that service? What about that service? Well, the BBC can turn around and say, we don't like closing services. We can't pretend it's uh, an improvement in the service we offer to the public, but we need to save money, and this is a sensible way of doing it. It doesn't mean except perhaps in the Murdoch camp, that the BBC has to shut down altogether, far from it. It can use that money to maintain its standards across the remaining services it broadcasts. Sir Christopher Bland, thank you. Ruth Jones starred in and wrote one of BBC Three's most successful comedies, Gavin and Stacey. What do you think? I co-wrote Gavin and Stacey with James Corden. Um, Hello. Um, Well, I've only just found out, to be honest, about half an hour ago. I'm filming, and um, the makeup designer told me. And I'm really shocked. Um, Obviously, BBC Three has a very special place in my heart because uh, I was in Little Britain and Nighty Night, and uh, and obviously Gavin and Stacey um, was first aired on BBC Three. And I think it's uh, it's very sad. However, I'm not an accountant, and... um, I don't know, there's obviously reasons for it. People aren't just doing it for the benefit of their health, are they? So. And if the channel moves online and its programmes move solely online, as a, as a programme maker, as, as a writer and an actor, does that matter much to you? Is, is that where the younger audience is? Well, I mean, obviously, that's now a trend that, that you know, people are watching stuff more online. More and more, people don't tend to watch things live as they go out anyway people are using i mean i catch up with my arches every night on online um so you know people that is that is what's happening but in terms of how much the program is going to cost to make that's surely not going to change it's still going to cost the same can still need the same budgets to make that standard of uh, you know that quality of program so i don't really understand the maths here Ruth Jones, thank you. This is a a proposal, we understand, that will be announced tomorrow by BBC management. It's possible that the BBC 
Trust, the successor organisation to the governors that Sir Christopher Bland used to be part of, it's possible the members of the Trust will say, uh, we don't like that decision. They've already done that once before when BBC management wanted to close the radio service Six Music. In the end, after a campaign, it stayed open. One of the people who helped save Six Music is Tracy Mortar. What did you do? What was so successful about your effort? Hello. Um, well, basically, most campaigns, you just they work because people care. And it was a massive group, group effort. And I think what happened with Six Music, it worked because it wasn't just online. Because likes and signing a petition online, they don't take up much time. But people actually went and protested outside and actually physically did something. So I think that might have been where, where, why the Trust listened to us on the subject of Six Music. Actually getting in their faces. Yeah, because there are always people moaning online and people are very quick to do that and they don't praise the things they love enough while they have them, which is probably what happens with most things. They think um, people aren't that interested because they only complain. Um, but yes, because it took people's time. They made a massive effort and banners and they travelled distances to go and protest about six, losing six music. So I think if people want to save BBC Three, that's what they're going to have to do. And if they want a channel that will take risks with new comedy, they're going to have to actually get off of their computers and do something. But obviously social media is a way of rounding everybody up and getting everyone together, so it's obviously a key part of it. Do you think they should? Is it, should it be saved? Definitely, yes. Um, the whole point of the BBC is they need to cater for everybody. and Well, they say um, they'll do that online, don't they? They do, but a lot of comedy I have found by flicking channels late at night, not because I've gone searching for them, it's because I've turned over, like recently I found Uncle, and I was just flicking through, and that's on BBC Three, and found it, and it was amazing, and him and her and all sorts of programmes that I've found by accident. If you go to iPlayer, you're usually looking for something specific that you already know you like. So if new writers are going to be given a chance, they kind of need to be aired, I think. And as Ruth said, surely um, the programmes are going to cost the same to make, so I'm not quite sure. So I don't know the ins and outs of why it would save so much more money not to air it on, on normal me. television. Award-winning Thank comedian you. Russell Kane, a current presenter on BBC Three, presents Live at the Electric, and Boyd Hilton, our regular voice of television, is with me as well. Russell, what's your reaction to this news? No, obviously, I'm absolutely gutted. I love BBC Three and I work there. So that, that's the emotional response. Also, I think it's a bit of a shame for the overall BBC portfolio. BBC Three has a very important role in providing innovative, creative... Uh, programming. It might be a bit younger skewed, but it's not got the, the threat, the commercial threat over it. It doesn't have to hit high viewing figures. Things can grow there naturally and then eventually become hits. It's, it's all the brilliant, quirky, individualistic spirit of BBC, but it's for a slightly younger, more younger skewed uh, audience. So that's why it would be it, devastating for it to go. Is it so, uh, Russell, Russell, it's a mistake in your view. It's a mistake. It would definitely be a mistake to get rid of it. And also, just the very, if you look at the nature of the BBC, I have pay my 145 pounds so does many people of all ages We've all got a right to be entertained no one gets to dominate this debate about what the right type of tv is by sort of just by quoting catchy titles from bbc 3s past as a way of sort of denigrating the overall channel everyone has a right to put their 145 pounds on the table and then be entertained not just a select group of loud voiced cultural elitist people at the top of the food chain and um, and boyd hilton on on that point it's it, it... Yeah, people under 30 do, as Russell says, also pay the licence fee. There'll be some BBC Three stuff on the iPlayer. You don't need to pay for a licence fee to watch the iPlayer. And so you've got BBC One, average audience, average viewer of BBC One is in their 50s, BBC Two, I think, is in their 50s, BBC Four, average viewer in their 60s, uh, Radio Two, Five Live, etc., average age, middle-aged. You've got Radio yeah. One and One Extra. That's it, right? That's, yeah. that's yeah. it. This, this decision does smack to me of, you know, old blokes deciding to get rid of something they don't really understand. And, you know, it's infuriated me over the years, you know, when you get to see, you know, Jeremy Paxton on Newsnight and uh, other people like that making kind of jokey references to BBC Three in those kind of shock title shows. But in fact, you know, right from the beginning, it's given new talent a go. Matt Lucas and David Williams started on BBC Three after being on Radio 4, of course. Um, him and her. I'm going to a screening tomorrow morning of a show called In the Flesh, which is a brilliant BBC Three drama about zombies. It was a new writer... 
largely new cast. It was great. It's been recommissioned. They're screening it tomorrow. So Guy Bennett, the head of, head of BBC Three, is supposed to be there introducing it. I, I wonder what he's going to say. And that's an example of a show that would never be made on BBC One or Two. Why or couldn't that channel. be on ITV Two, boys? There's some, there's some good too, comedy on ITV2. Yeah, because ITV2 doesn't commission new drama from new talent. It just doesn't do it. It's not, it's not, it's not interested in that. And Russell? I, I, I love ITV2 and I've worked on ITV2 and I'm happy to work there again. But it is different when you're working in an environment commercially driven, when your eyes on how many people watch more than how different am I being? Am I trying to do something creatively different? You might not get it right, but how wonderful that there's this crucible, this place where you can go throw ideas around creativity and see what happens. Monty Python would definitely be on BBC Three if they were if mm. they were launched today. Uh, boy, just to look at this from, from the other side, the BBC mm. has to cut, and we know it has to save money and about £100 yeah. million. Pounds. And the Director General made this not unreasonable point that what they call salami slicing, where you take a bit off everyone, is in the end not, not healthy. And so he said, um, I'm going to save yeah. £100 million pounds by getting rid of a service. And yeah. the BBC, their argument would be, we will still commission shows for young people. People under 30 don't watch much linear telly. They tend to down load and stream and use the iPlayer. So why don't we put the brand on the iPlayer? There is, a, there is also a strong argument for doing this, isn't there? I think there's an argument. I think, I think they're wrong. I mean, I, I actually think that the salami... I mean, this phrase, salami, is actually really annoys me because all it, all it means... It's a phrase used to say, well, it feels wrong to, slow, to cut back lots of different services. But I actually think it's, it, it's more irritating. It's, it's, it's a worse decision to get rid of your one channel that has yeah. a remit to appeal to, to young people, your one TV channel, rather than get rid of some of the services that have been provided to all, loads of those services that are provided for older people. It doesn't make sense to me. I think, it, I think actually what they call salami slicing does make more sense than getting rid yeah. of the one channel you've got for young people. And this whole thing about putting it on the iPlay, I don't really understand what that means. The vast majority of young people still, up and down the country, are watching TV on TV. It's a myth that they're all watching it on their iPads. Yeah, sure, you know, fairly well-off people in, 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 in cities might be watching stuff on their iPads mm. and their iPhones. And Russell, the vast majority of people are watching stuff on And TV. Russell, even if it survived, well, it's going to survive on the iPlayer, it's clearly going to have much, much less money because the point of this whole thing is to save a massive amount of money. Do you fear that the iPlayer survival of this brand will be a bit of a token thing? Well, the first thing to say is cuts do have to be made, and I sympathise with that decision, I'm not going to be an idiot. I understand that things have to be cut from somewhere, but sometimes, like the salami option, is better. You're better off shaving a bit of flesh off every limb rather than cutting someone's leg off. But uh, if you go if you go onto the in, onto the internet, you are going to have less budgets overall. So if you haven't got that money to invest in the ideas and the talent, arguably the ideas aren't going to grow as well as they would have done with proper t with proper TV station budgets. And also, you feel. It's Something that premieres on TV has that rubber stamp of approval right from the very tippy top of the BBC. So unless the process starts in the same way, how will that stuff ever grow from the internet and grow through properly and have the best chance of developing? Although it's still, you know, it remains to be seen whether it will work if it does go this way. It might be fine, but the alarm bells are there for me that if you put less money and a smaller environment to something, how can it flourish in just the same way? Logically, it can't, surely. Uh, Russell, it's good to speak to you. Thank you very much. Russell Kane, the comic okay. who has a current show on BBC three called live at the electric um okay well, let me bring tracy morton in now because paul you mentioned a couple of moments ago the campaign for six music and you might remember actually there was a, a battle to save bbc six music a few years ago after it was threatened with closure one of those people instrumental in saving the station was tracy morton hello tracy it's a bit deja vu for you i suppose today it is a bit my phone's been quite busy so what happened last time how did you get involved and get this campaign off the ground for six music um, well, I was always a, a big fan and listen all the time, and I joined a group to save it when I heard it was under threat. And because I did the Rage Against Machine campaign, um, someone obviously thought I'd be a good admin. So this I is when you tried to. In charge. So I was just going to explain this is when you tried to get Rage yeah. Against Machine to number one, not an X Factor person. Yes, to number right. one at Christmas. Yeah. So I mean. <laughs> so, it, it, there was a lot of there was a lot of you know excitement around your campaign. You got a, a lot of support quite quickly, didn't you? We did, yes, because the the fans, the listeners are massively passionate, and and that's the thing. Um, anyone can start a campaign, but unless people believe in it, nothing's going to happen. Um, but what what I think happened was because people actually took physical action. Um, people moan online all day long on Twitter. That's what people do, and um, so the BBC 
probably won't take much notice of that or petitions or anything like that. But it's because with BBC Six, people actually went out on the streets and we protested in person. And I think that might have swayed things with the trust. Mm. Um, This is going to be a bit trickier because I think it's um, comedy writers that are really going to bear the brunt of this because it's the only channel that takes risks at the moment. Tracy, 